Hello family, Pastor Olawu from Christian Pentecostal Church here, and uh, this is our daily devotional moment. As uh, we just finished the Armor of God series last week, and as I mentioned, we're moving into an Allegiance series. And um, so we're going to do this a bit differently, or try to anyway, in the sense of we'll have, uh, if anybody ever uses the Bible app, you have your verses of scripture, and then we, we go into it. So um, starting with the verses of scripture. We have a few verses to look into and then we'll take it from there. Uh, beforehand, I guess, let's do, no, let's do it that way. Okay. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 15 is the first one. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. This is Jesus speaking. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. In Romans chapter eight, verse one to two, it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death. And the last verses of scripture we're going to look at for to start off is John chapter 3, verse 16 to 21. I'm sure we all know John chapter 3, verse 16. It's an infamous verse of scripture. It's the, the crux of the gospel. The, um, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believed on him is not condemned, but he that believed not is condemned already, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hated the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So to start off, um, I guess to move forward, I want to establish something. The Since this is the beginning of the Allegiance series, let me define Allegiance. The dictionary defines allegiance as the loyalty of a citizen to his or her government or of a subject to his or her sovereign. We are children of God. We are citizens of heaven as those of us who are saved, who believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. As John 16 says, we, are, we believe and we will not perish. We believe in the Son and therefore we will not perish. But so we... Because we believe in the Son of God, then he is our king. So we are subjects, and our allegiance or our loyalty must be to our king. So to begin, our king says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That is the beginning of our allegiance. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So to establish something, you know, I think I, I read, a, I don't know if it's Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis, he said, that um, C.S. Lewis said that he didn't want to talk about like soft soap Christianity. I think those are the words he used. You know, the truth of the matter is, yes, God loves us. Yes, we are children of the living God. Yes, he died for our sins. But yes, he also expects certain things from us. Never, to my knowledge, do we find in scripture where Jesus or God the Father, or the Holy Spirit excuses sin. Never do we see where he, the requirement that God gave is, be ye holy as I am holy. Every time we see Jesus heal somebody and he tells them, he says, go and sin no more. He doesn't say, go, well, you know, hey, you sin, it's okay. No, there is no excuse. Go and sin no more. And we see that, you know, when we look at Romans, sorry, where was I? Verse of scripture, Romans 8, verse 2 says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you see free from the law of sin and death. So we, those of us who are living with the life that Christ has given us, we are free from the law of sin and death. And the Bible is true. Scripture is true. It's unbroken. There's no, no excuse. Now, am I saying that we do not sin, that we do not have any sin? No, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying the expectation. As a Christian, the expectation is that we sin less and less and less and less. 
because our desire, our greatest desire should be to please our sovereign, to pre please our king and to obey his command. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So now condemnation, because the first portion of that says Romans chapter eight, Verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You know, I've often heard the verse, There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. But it doesn't end there. It says, To them who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And that verse ties in together with what Jesus says in John chapter six, chapter 3, where he says, You know, to though him, he did not come. The Son was not sent into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. And he says, he that believed on him is not condemned. Well, every single one of us who believe in the name of the Son of God, who believe in Jesus Christ, we are not condemned. We are saved, we are sanctified, we are sealed until the day of redemption. We are not condemned. But... As being not condemned or the uncondemned or the free or the guiltless based on the blood of Jesus Christ, Christ didn't end it there. He said, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Okay, fine. We fall into the first category. We are not condemned. Fine. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So those are those who are, not con who are condemned. They don't believe in the name of the Son of God. And since they do not, they are condemned already. Fine. And this is the condemnation. For those who are condemned, this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth comes to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. So every single one of us who is not condemned, we must walk in the light so that the light will expose our deeds, that they are wrought, that they are perfected, that they are made, that they are of God. Every single uncondemned, every single free believer, Every single person who is free from the law of sin and death, we must walk in the light and our deeds must be manifest in the light, obeying the commandments that the Lord has given us because we love him. So we obey his commands. So it's like our allegiance to Christ is that we love him and we obey his commandments. The condemnation, since we are not condemned, that we must walk, talk, act, and live as those who are not condemned. That our deeds are good. What does that mean? We must strive to sin less. You know, I've heard this statement many times said before that, you know, we are, what is it? We are, we are saved. No, not perfect. I think that's what we are, that's something along that lines. And it's, yes, we are saved. We are forgiven, not perfect. Yes, we are not perfect. But our strive must be towards perfection. The Bible says to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Our strive must be towards perfection. From glory to glory, from grace to grace. To be shaped, molded, and formed in the image of the Son, that what people see when they see me, when they see you as one who is not condemned, is Jesus first. Not Pastor Olawu, not you, Jesus first. That everything they see about you exemplifies the Christ, exemplifies Christ. Everything they see about me exemplifies Christ. You know, when Jesus says that, when Jesus, oh, sorry, when, the, when John the Baptist says, I must de decrease so he increases, that should be our desire. Because our loyalty is to our sovereign. Our allegiance is to our maker. 
So as a good soldier, we endure the hardness. What is that hardness? That we put ourselves down. We fight temptation. We stand firm in the word of God and we grow. We grow and we are shaped more like Jesus every day. How do we do that? The word of God says that we have been given everything, everything we need to live this life in righteousness and in godliness. Let us study to show ourselves approved. In every moment, let us make the decisions to live for Jesus, to talk for Jesus, to walk for Jesus. That our desire, our longing, and our allegiance is to our maker. We are not condemned, but we are convicted. We live in conviction, the conviction of the Holy Spirit to let our deeds be manifest in the light. God bless you. No compromise.